In a small town south of the city of Kazan, the sun descends down toward the horizon, past the rows of trees. The Cheleshava family prepares to make dinner. It seems that tonight is the same as any other night, but it's the last night that eight-year-old Maria Cheleshava can expect to see her family alive again. Maria Cheleshava watches her father descend into their home's root cellar to grab some potatoes for dinner. He does not return, and Maria's mother descends after him to discover what's taking so long. Neither parent re-emerged from the depths of the house, so Maria's brother went in after them. He did not return, so finally Maria's grandmother trekked down into the darkness. In the end, Maria was forced to sink down into the gloom to find her entire family dead at the bottom. What could have taken their lives one by one down at the bottom of that root cellar? What terrible, eldritch power was waiting for them in the shadows? A portion of this video is sponsored by Dragon City. Download Dragon City for free through our link below and start building your very own dragon empire from amongst thousands of different dragons. You can breed a couple dragons to get completely new mysterious eggs to hatch. What dragons will you hatch next? Here's a pro gamer tip. All dragon babies are precious and deserve love. Feed your dragons so they evolve and train them to get ready to battle. Pit your favorite dragons against one another in the arena and participate in new events each week. You can even unlock awesome rewards and dragons from their brand new battle pass. The game features dragons based on your favorite YouTubers like Socks for One, and you can currently get the dragons for Dream, George Not Found, and Wisp, the other one. Click our link in the description to get special free rewards, 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the very rare black metal dragon. August 2014, Laishiva, a town in the Republic of Tatarstan, where the Russian Volga and the Kama rivers meet. Eight-year-old girl Maria Cheleshiva was sitting in her family's kitchen with her mother, father, brother, and grandmother while everyone pitched in to help with dinner. Like many others in the area, they had a root cellar attached to their home. So Maria's father, Mikhail, a 42-year-old law professor at Kazan Federal University, left his family to go grab some things from below. Some time passed, but Mikhail hadn't returned. Confused why her husband was taking so much time down there, Maria's mother, Anastasia, age 38, went down looking for him. More time passed, but neither Mikhail nor Anastasia returned. Growing more confused and concerned, Maria's 18-year-old brother, Georgie, descended down into the root cellar to look for his parents. Again, no one returned, and fearing the worst, Maria's 68-year-old grandmother, Iraida, called their neighbor to tell them that something strange and suspicious was happening. Worried about her family, her grandmother couldn't wait for help and went down into the cellar too, never to return. Now alone, Maria sat in her family's kitchen trying to figure out what to do. Should she go down into the cellar too? Maybe it was all a trick and her family was just waiting down there to scare her. The eight-year-old, fearing the worst, bravely ventured from the safety of her family's kitchen. When she came to the door to the cellar, she saw that it was left open. A putrid, dead smell emanated from within. When Maria peered into the cellar, she saw something that would shake grown men to their very core. Sprawled across the floor of the cellar, she found the bodies of her father, mother, brother, and grandmother. By the time the authorities arrived, it was too late, and any chance that Maria's family could be saved had passed. She had gone from being the youngest in a family of five to being the sole survivor. It's a tragic story, but it also brings up questions. What happened to the Cheleshiva family down in the root cellar? Was there something sinister waiting down there in the dark dampness of the cold ground? Something as simple and innocuous as potatoes are to blame. Now, I hear you asking, Brew, how could potatoes cause such a tragedy? 
But you'll be surprised to know that this isn't the first or only time that potatoes have taken lives. Glasgow, Scotland, 1918. 61 people from 18 separate households fell ill after eating a bad batch of potatoes. The day after, a five-year-old boy died by strangulation of his bowel due to his retching and vomiting. In 1925, a family of seven were poisoned by potatoes, killing two of them. According to medical notes, they experienced vomiting, exhaustion, and trouble breathing before they lost consciousness, passing away shortly after. In North Korea, 1952, facing starvation due to rampant famine, whole villages of people had no choice but to eat rotting potatoes. According to the British Medical Journal, 382 people were affected in one area alone. 52 people ended up hospitalized. And some of the most intense cases saw individuals dying of heart failure within 24 hours of eating a rotting potato. 22 people ended up dying, and even those among them with less severe symptoms such as irregular pulse, enlargement of the heart, and blowing lips died within 10 days of eating rotten potatoes. And again, in 1979, at a South London boys' school, 78 students and a number of staff fell ill simultaneously without warning. They complained of abdominal pain, diarrhea, vomiting, and for some severe cases, depression of the central nervous system which controls your involuntary bodily processes, like your heartbeat, your breathing, and even your blinking. CNS depression, in its most severe forms, can cause memory loss, slowed heart rate, and slowed breathing among other symptoms. Some of the students fell into comas and had episodes of convulsive twitching, Fortunately, five days after the outbreak, all of the students recovered, although some of them hallucinated for days after recovery. After the students recovered, investigators traced the source of the illness to a bag of old potatoes left over from the previous summer. Either by ignorance or apathy, they were mistakenly inserted into the school's automatic peeling machine, and then served to the staff and students. Now, there is a big difference between these cases and the story of the Cheleshava family. Specifically, none of Maria's family actually ate any potatoes. So what actually happened down in that cellar? Potatoes, while delicious, boiled, mashed, or stuck in a stew, can become incredibly toxic if they're improperly stored. It's because, believe it or not, potatoes are actually a variant of nightshade. Members of the Solanaceae family of plants include tomatoes, eggplant, peppers, tobacco, goji berries, and even petunias. But the family may be most known by its most dangerous species, deadly nightshade. If Deadly Nightshade sounds familiar to some of you, it's probably because you've heard it mentioned in movies and books. It appears in Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, used as a poison to incapacitate mad scientist Dr. Finkelstein. The plant is also used multiple times in Game of Thrones as a sleeping aid, and as a poison to execute one uh, particular individual in Season 7. Nightshade plants are unique because they contain small levels of a substance called alkaloid. Alkaloids are any type of base, as in the opposite of acid, that contains nitrogen. They can be used for a variety of things. For example, the painkiller morphine, the malaria drug quinine, and the poison strychnine all use alkaloids in some form. Now, the problem with nightshades is that the alkaloids that they contain are, well, usually bad for us. The problem for the Cheleshava family, and our other cases, comes down to an alkaloid in nightshade plants called solanine. Nightshade plants create solanine as an insecticide to protect themselves during their growth, which can wreak havoc in our own bodies. Eating too much solanine can trigger all of the symptoms mentioned earlier, including vomiting, diarrhea, headaches, paralysis of the central nervous system, and, in really severe cases, coma and death. A 200-pound person would need to eat around 20 pounds of fresh potatoes to poison themselves. But if a potato has gone bad, well, that could increase the levels of solanine up to 10 times. So just two pounds of rotten potatoes could have enough solanine to get you. And consider this. A large baked potato weighs around one pound. Just some uh, food for thought. But what does solanine actually do inside your body? The exact mechanisms of how solanine poisons us isn't entirely clear to even the most well-educated of experts. 
The main theory, however, is that solanine opens up PT channels in cell membranes, lowering their membrane potential, the negative or positive electrical charge of the cell, which leads to a calcium ion buildup inside the cell, triggering the mechanism for apoptosis. <sighs> Okay, now, that's a lot of really complicated science words, but bear with me for a second. What that means, in very basic terms, is that by lowering the electrical charge of a cell, solanine forces it to pull in too many positively charged calcium ions, which turns on the cell's self-destruct mechanism, otherwise known as apoptosis. So, the more solanine you consume, the faster and more widespread the cellular damage can be. But this still doesn't explain what actually happened down in that root cellar. Since potatoes are root veggies, the part that we eat is the root, not the leafy parts, exposure to light will trigger their growth, which increases the level of chlorophyll and solanine, turning the potato green and mean. Many people store their potatoes in boxes at the bottoms of their pantry, tucked away in bowls and cupboards, or at the darkest corners of the spookiest root cellars to keep them fresh longer. Now. The problem with root cellars is ventilation. If a potato rots, some of that solanine will start leaking out in a gaseous form. The longer rotten potatoes are left in a place with stagnant air, the more solanine gas can build up inside. So, as Maria's father entered the cellar, he likely started breathing solanine gas, and he either passed out from hypoxia, aka a lack of oxygen, or the solanine gas itself knocked him unconscious. From then, he would have passed away from the effects of the solanine, or, again, simple oxygen deprivation. Then, as each of her other family members entered the cellar, they likely immediately went to help their loved ones, inadvertently exposing themselves to more and more of the solanine gas, taking their lives. The only reason that Maria herself survived is that her grandmother left the door open, allowing fresh air into the cellar. She was saved but not before her grandmother succumbed to the toxic fumes. Maria now lives with her relatives, and her extended family has asked for financial support to help give her a new life. When it comes to your own safety, the best way to keep yourself safe from solanine poisoning is to make sure that any potatoes are kept in a cool, well-ventilated dark place, ideally a dry environment as well. You don't need anything fancy. Honestly, a dark cupboard is all you'll need to keep them as fresh as possible. If you suspect that your tubers are going bad, just cut into them to see if there's any green discoloration or other visible rot. If you find any, it's best to just throw them away. If you need help remembering, just think of this rhyme. You can boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. But if they're green, they're not for you. When potatoes are green, they'll put you in a coma. Thanks again to our sponsor, Dragon City. Download the game for free from our link below.